Greetings fellow learners. In this video, we are going to talk about how object detection was done before neural networks. So what is object detection? Well, we take an image, we then localize the objects of interest in the image, and then we'll classify the objects of interest too. And that's object detection. Now, what makes object detection though so challenging? Well, there are a few things. For one, the objects of the same class can vary. Both of these are dogs, yet they are both very structurally different. Then the pictures of the same sample can look very different. For example, this is of a much darker shade than this image, even though they represent the same exact dog. We can also have unconstrained background clutter and object scaling, as some objects may be closer to the camera than others, yet they have to be recognized as the same object class. And for all of these reasons, object detection can be quite a challenging problem. And so, how do you do object detection? Well, we need a way to extract some information from this image, such that the features or the information extracted are invariant across different samples of the same object class. They're invariant to differences for the same sample. They're invariant to background clutter and also to different sizes. So how do you do object detection? Well, we can illustrate this by building a dog face detector system where the input is gonna be some complex image and because the input is a complex image, we could use something called wavelets to detect some features from this image. Now, essentially, wavelets are equivalent to handcraft feature detectors. And we're specifically in this example going to use a family of wavelets that's commonly used called the Har wavelets. And these are used to extract features from complex input images. So for example, like we're gonna use like a two cross two wavelet that kind of looks like this. This is going to detect vertical contrast information in the image. Similarly, this will detect horizontal contrast and this will detect diagonal contrast in an image. So let's take a look at our training set. Now let's assume that our training set just consists of images of dog faces and also of non-dog faces that are all of the same size of n cross n. In this case, let's just say that there is small resolution of 19 cross 19. And while these are shown in color, just assume that they only have one channel and they would be just grayscaled. Now to perform the feature transformations here, we'll make use of this two cross two matrix and then convolve it with the original image. And doing so, like for example, if we take these four numbers and you know four times whatever these four pixel areas here, we're going to get a floating point number that represents some activation here. And if we just keep doing this over the convolution operation, we're going to end up with 18 cross 18 feature transformations or 324 feature transformations of the image. Now we can repeat the same for the two cross two, the horizontal Haar wavelet, and then the diagonal contrast Haar wavelet. And we also, in order to capture larger structural changes in the image, we are also going to use four cross four versions of these Haar wavelets. So that's, we're gonna perform like a four cross four convolution operation. So if we keep sliding the windows here with the stride of one, we're going to end up with 16 cross 16 matrix of feature transformations. And this is essentially the 256 that we see here. And we're gonna do this for the horizontal, as well as the diagonal contrast Haar wavelet. So effectively, what we see have done is that we've taken a 19 cross 19 image, applied a feature transformation using these wavelets in order to extract information that looks like this. So there's gonna be 1,740 activations. And this is essentially collectively the coded representation of this complex image. Now what we do is we take this coded representation and we want to train this like SVM classifier as a binary classifier to detect if it's a dog face or not a dog face. So this classifier here needs to be trained. 
Now, the problem that we have here is if we try to train this like classifier with 1740 features, these features are very highly correlated and they contain a lot of redundant information that can make training very difficult. And so to deal with this, what we can do is feature selection. So we'll take these, you know, 1740 activations and select the most important features from this. Let's say we select only 50 features from this. So in order to do this feature selection, here is just a rough outline of a potential algorithm. So first you determine the 1,740 features for every training sample in the data set. Then for each feature, what you're gonna do is you're gonna compute the mean activation for all the dog face images, and then you're gonna compute the mean activation for all the non-dog face images. And then what we'll do is determine the importance by taking like a difference and then squaring them. And then we'll extract the features corresponding to the largest values in importance. And so what this would mean is that the 50 largest values are going to be, you know, they're gonna be like uniquely activated for dog face images compared to non dog face images. And hence they are the most important features. So overall, and now in our pipeline, what we'll do is we'll take the 19 cross 19 image, perform a feature transformation to extract 1740 activations that represent the image, perform feature selection, and we're only going to get like 50 of these important features and create a vector out of this. Now, this vector is then going to be used to train an SVM classifier to get a dog face or a non dog face. Now in this entire flow, just to be clear, this feature transformation part, these were handcrafted feature detectors. We use wavelets that are, you know, predefined. So we're already set over here for inference. Similarly here, this feature selection piece is already done. And it's already trained in some sense using the algorithm that we specified in the last slide. Now it's only this SVM that's just an untrained classifier. And so what we can do is we can pass each item in our data set and then try to train this SVM classifier as a dog face or a non-dog face until eventually this classifier too becomes trained. And now we have all the pieces set to make inference. So to do inference, now in this case, we can have images that are much larger. Let's say the input image here for inference is 100 cross 100 and the goal is to detect all the dog faces in this image. So what we will do is first do some multi-level scaling. And this is useful in, to ensure that we're detecting like dog faces that are either close to the camera or further away from a camera. And typically I've only, I've only shown like four resolutions, but they could be much more. Now for each of these cases, we're going to perform a feature transformation in order to get all of the coded representation of each of these images. And to do this, we will use our two cross two and four cross four HAR wavelets. And if you apply a convolution operation, that's how you get these uh, values that you see here. Next, what we're going to do is that we are really only interested in, you know, for our SVM classification, we can only really take 19 cross 19 sections. So what we're gonna do is take this 19 cross 19 section. Now this 19 cross 19 section corresponds to each of these coefficients. And if you add the number of coefficients here, you're gonna get 1740 coefficients. Similarly, you'll have, if you take this region over here, it corresponds to all the coefficients in these red squares. Similarly here and similarly here. Now, the goal here is now to determine in these red squares, is there a dog, right? For each of these like windows over here, is there a dog? And to do so, well, we'll perform some feature selection and then we're gonna pipe it into an SVM classifier. So let's say that these are hypothetical, like predicted values. And what this is saying is like, there is a 2% chance that there is a dog in this window. There's a 3% chance that there is a dog in this window. There's a 21% chance in this window and a 43% chance that the dog is in this window over here, right? And what we do now is we'll take all of these four predictions along with the four sliding windows, the four windows over here that you see right? And we will store it in just like a data store. And what we're going to do now is we're going to slide this window. 
So when we slide this window, typically we would slide this window on the coefficients. And if you slide you know, one window on the coefficients, it'll correspond to like only a single pixel shift in this window. I've just shown a bigger shift for visualization purposes only. But you can slide the window effectively and just say, is there a dog in this part of the image now? And here it's like, you know, 1%. Is it in this part of the image? It's 5%. In this part of the image, it's 61%. In this part of the image, it says 69%. And then we'll store all of these four predictions again. And then continue sliding the window and then repeating again and again. And eventually what we're going to do is we're going to take all of the you know, stored predictions that we have, and we are going to scale all the bounding boxes to be the same size as the original image. So if you were to take all those bounding boxes that we saw and put it in the image, it'll look something like this, completely covered. Now what we do is we select the bounding boxes in decreasing order of SVM prediction. So what I've done is just like the highest SVM predictions have darker bounding boxes and the lowest SVM predictions have very light bounding boxes. And so that highlights some form of importance that you can kind of see here. And then what we can do is now iterate over this descending order of SVM importance and just remove boxes with a high overlap with the previous boxes. So for example, this could be like our first box that we encountered right over here. And the second box might have, you know, it might be right over here, but the overlap is so large that we do not consider it. Similarly, if there was a box that only, you know, it's a small box that was just on the nose or the eye over here, it would also be discarded because it has like 100% overlap with this box over here. And in this way, you would ideally get one bounding box per dog face that is in the image. And so at a high level, this is kind of how we used to do object detection with this sliding window approach. Quiz time. Have you been paying attention? Let's quiz you to find out. What distinguishes non-neural network object detection from neural network object detection? A. Non-neural methods use handcraft features, while neural methods learn features from data. B. Non-neural methods cannot handle multiple objects in an image. C. Neural methods work only on grayscale images, while non-neural network methods work on colored images. And D. Non-neural network methods require more training data than neural methods. I'll give you a few seconds to answer this question. The correct option is A, but can you tell me why? Please comment your reasoning down in the comments below and let's have a discussion. And if you think I do deserve it at this point, please do consider giving this video a like because it will help me out a lot. Now that's gonna do it for quiz time, but before we go, let's generate a summary. In this video, we talked about how object detection was done before neural networks. Object detection requires localizing images of interest and then classifying them. But we also saw cases of why object detection could be challenging. And one way to kind of get about this is to use something called wavelets. So wavelets can extract information from very complex image input signals in order to compute more coded representations of the image that we can use further downscale. So these wavelets are handcraft feature detectors effectively, and we use something called Har wavelets specifically to extract information from images. So during training, we can take an image, perform feature transformations, form feature selection, and then classify with SVM as a dog face or a non-dog face. Then during inference, we perform multi-level scaling, will perform the same transformation, selection, and as well as classification, and store every single prediction as well as its bounding box that we encounter. And then eventually what we can do is just select the most important bounding boxes based on the SVM prediction and remove cases of large overlap in order to localize and detect an image as a dog face. And that's all that we have for today. 
Thank you all so much for watching. If you're interested in some more reading material that kind of went into describing this specific sliding window approach, I'll attach the main paper down in the description below. Now, if you think I deserve it, please do consider giving this video a like, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.